Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup quarter final between Ungern and Silse. As it starts off with cheering fans and uh Silse gets an extra reroll there. Silse with the undead, he won the toss and chose to receive. He's chosen block for his double skill on the guard mummy. Now I would have really been tempted to have gone um for like two guard but he didn't he's gone for two block which to be fair might might do him better in the the semis and final if he gets there so i can see the point you know you want to use the doubles you know you can take guard on the other the other ghoul if he wins the other ghoul the other mummy so so but for this matchup it means he's left with two guard versus six which is um not good, is it? <laughs> Six guard for Ungern. He, he, he didn't take it on a catcher, he actually took it on a lineman, his extra guard. So, yeah, he's got nearly as much guard as you can have. He, he could have had seven guard, because he could have had... Um, well, he could have used a double. He could have actually had even more guard. He could have had eight guard, because he could have taken the double on the other catcher or the lineman, whatever, and um, instead of leader. And he could have taken guard instead of mighty blow. So he could have had eight guard, but he's got a lot of guard. Um, so Silze making a first turn removal and some safe moves before picking up the ball. Very good. Uh, but the reason why he didn't take guard on the second catcher is I've noticed this Ungern benches a throw and a catcher on defense, which is, you know, a fine idea, really. Um, you know, he's got more strength on defense and he means he's always got this combo for the second half. With 13 players and leader, I actually like that. At first, I didn't like it, but. When he only had two rerolls, but now I actually see the point in the leader choice. I think it's quite nice. But of course, lots of people have got good value from block on their ogres. Um, overall, though, big guys have been terrible. So, and block encourages you to activate them more, doesn't it? Um, so Ungern has got a 69% win rate in Champs Ladder, um, and he qualified from season 14 of Champs Ladder. That's how he qualified. Silse's only got a 54% win rate in Champs Ladder, but hasn't played a lot. And uh, he qualified from Franco Bowl. And they're both French, so they're both like the winners of the real World Cup here, aren't they? Yes. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's a funny old game because I, I really do think humans kind of have the advantage here. With so much guard, and uh, you know, kind of a passive defense. That's fair enough. You don't want to give him more mighty blow hits than you have to. Though to be fair, they've both got two mighty blow, so it's not like it's not like the humans should be completely scared of the mighty blow that the or that the undead have. And it's re they really are very strong in this rule set. I think humans. So just moving over the other side a little bit. Of course, <laughs> Silse with four ghouls is able to move around a bit. Bonehead, not super important, but he is left away from both enemies. So he's gone for this blitz so that if he gets the pow, he's uh, you know, he's, he's it looks it looks good in the pow, doesn't it? He gets to knock a mummy down and chain the other one away. He chains the other one away anyway, more usually. But I think I would have pushed it to this side, just to put him on the same side as the ogre. I don't think it matters much. So that was the problem, if he only got the push, or a ball down, he gets hit, punched back, doesn't he? So getting the guys in for three dice splits against a defenseless player. The pal. Oh, I'm surprised he followed that. 
Because you can use guard to two dice the mummy now, can't you? There's almost a way through to hit the ball here. I could have maybe just come around the back. Almost could have come around the back there. So the first thing he does is get the guard in there. So yeah, two dice of the mummy. And then with two guard in there, you can you can do that. Ooh, a bit unlucky there. That's not bad, is it? Him prone. Ooh, maybe he could have gone here. Maybe that guy could have gone there. Not not blocking there. It's it's a tough one because if you don't block, obviously you don't fail. But it's pretty easy for Silsa to just get the assist and get two two TT two two DBs here. I maybe would have risked a one -er for a a one -er for a two -er. Quite patient here from Silsa, isn't he? Just moving around, trying to get some kind of advantage in the first few turns. Doesn't have to get super forward. Though with a blizzard um, making GFIs harder, he's got to advance, you know, kind of faster than he normally would. Quite a strong turn there. Now he's quite quite isolated. Oh, he goes for the one dice, he re-rolls it. He had four re-rolls, so this is absolutely a fair thing to do, I think. And yeah, that's suddenly he's got a lot out of position, and he goes even more out of position here. I don't know why, because he could have just stood that guy up and have two dice from the ogre. Not sure about this one. Oh, it's because he's going to chain his ogre out and move his ogre. Ah. So that was his idea, was to chain the ogre out. And then move the ogre over here. One, two, three, four, five, and get the ogre in there. So that was actually a pretty nice idea. But maybe he should have re-rolled it. <laughs> um, because without that, he's left horrifically out of position. That was... You know, I think I would have maybe just stood these two, stood this guy up and punched, and then these two would have run over there. But it was a nice idea that he, what he had, to be fair. Just didn't, didn't get the dice he wanted. So let's say getting another cheeky stun there. You can get three dice on, on this catcher with block. And also set up a surf on him next turn. Yeah, that's fine, both down fine there. So this is a bit far forward, but due to uh due for Unger and gone for this play, which which was a nice play, you know, obviously it didn't work out for him, but if he had two more players it would have looked a lot better over here, wouldn't he? Particularly as this is the tackler stranded. So maybe he shouldn't have gone for that play, but then obviously eight times out of nine he gets the push. But only 55% to knock him over, so... And he kind of needed the, the the knockdown. And also the extra block that the mummy gets from there, so hmm, not sure about that one. But you know, in the in the in with all the nerves and everything, and the pressure of the final, and a, you know, a bit of a... Tunnel vision, I think everyone gets tunnel vision while playing. You know, he probably spotted that chain out, thought it was great, went for it. And then, yeah, maybe he regretted it because that left him horribly out of position. And he's relying on the ogre as well, like, almost as if he should have taken block on him, really. Now, obviously, uh, <laughs> the ogre, you've kind of got to rely on him a bit against mummies, you know. 
Undead are basically a human team with two with two ogres. I think he could have just stood up the catcher here because although he could have been surfed, um, you know, it would have taken up a lot of actions. Like, he could have been quite annoying if he just stood up. But now it's tough because it's turned six, so so Silsa can't really run back. <laughs> um, I mean, he could. He could stay more or less where he is. He could just run back a little bit. So maybe he will. But he could also push down and try and get past with having all the duels. Randomly kills a chap. That's actually huge, isn't it? Because getting the Raise the Dead... Now he's got the fouling option, now that he's got two reserves. And three players off for... Uh, for Ungern. So, so while Ungern, you know, went for his play to chain the ogre, which did leave him lacking, he is also down three players. So, you know, it's not like it's not like I'm calling him bad or anything for doing that. Um, it's certainly tough to defend down three players, isn't it? Even if he even if he hadn't gone for that ogre play, and even if the ogre play was right, it could be. That's one thing in Blood Bowl, you certainly can't judge whether it was right or not by whether it worked or not. Well, you can, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> You've just got to look at the percentage chances and everything, haven't you? I don't like this. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I would have, I would have um, put him here. I would have put the ghoul there so he couldn't have got surfed. Whereas now, the 6 plus in to one dice him isn't even bad. Oh, wow. Well... He, who knows, he might have gone for that, but instead he won an 81 first. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have even hated just gone for the 6 plus one dice in. I mean, he probably wouldn't have done it, he was just going to block there and... You know, then he would have probably done some kind of blitz and try to squeeze him on the sideline, but... Horrible look there for Ramon going really, doesn't give him a chance. He can surf this, uh still say, let's pause it, could surf this... Uh, Blitzer here quite easily, punch him with the non-block and then punch him with block and then non-block or blitz with block and then block with block and then block with block so he could definitely go for the surf um, I would I would 100% have gone for the surf and then of course rolled the, rolled the power and not got it and uh, felt bad And now, of course, uh, Silse gets to control the, the Mighty Blow Tackler. So there's certainly a pair for using your Blitz there and stuff. And, you know, better better position defending the ball. So again, you know, it's not like it's not like it's right or wrong to do anything, is it? There's, uh, there's, all, there's all different things to think about. I liked, I liked uh, keeping the zombie in contact there. Because although you give a mighty blow hit to a zombie, had he dodged the foul um, and failed, then the the ogre could have blitzed a mummy, which could have been disaster for him. So I really like the uh, I really like the not going for the dodge out foul there. And didn't want to risk any blocks there. I don't know if he had any blocks that he could have made easily, um, but he didn't risk it, which is fair enough in the World Cup. Um, I don't think there was anyone he could have blitzed easily, to be honest. So, one turn chance for Bungern. It's not going to be easy, obviously, in a blizzard. Um, and you know, it, it asks you a question, do you even go for it? <laughs> I think you have to though, I think you really have to, when the only thing that matters is the win. I think you, you know, the result, I think you have to go for a one turn, no matter how unlikely it is. Um, different if it was in chance ladder or something where, you know, losing the players permanently is bad for your team. And getting the record is, you know, getting the win isn't the most important thing ever. But here it's it's everything, isn't it? He's got to go for the one turn. I think he's got to go for it. Everybody should have, even the movement six guys should have gone for one turners. 100%. So 
So I'm not a great fan of this defense by Silsley. He hasn't got the back line. He is blocking the easy uh, blitz, which is good. So you'd have to use the whole method. And then once you use the whole method, he pushes him to there, then there, then there. But then how does he fill in this square? So you know that you can block him probably. So you can push him to there, and then four plus three plus out. So it's, it's not it's not really hard dodges. And yeah, I'm not I'm not super excited by uh, <laughs> by that defense to be honest. Cheering fans doesn't really matter. Gets the power, re-rolls it, doesn't get the power. And that's the end of that. <laughs> so, yeah. Obviously looking for the push there for the one turn. Didn't get it. And now we can just punch things. I mean, it is, it is unlikely to score only one turn. It's no matter how easy it is to set up the blocks. Um, the hard part is always just physically rolling the pushes and the dodges. And, you know, all, all the dice rolls involved really are the hardest part of one turn. Is once, once people are good, and obviously at the World Cup, you would expect, and people have been good, you know? I mean, both people have played well so far. That was maybe a mistake trying to get the Olga free. But eight times out of nine, you would have gotten free, and, and you know you'd have got the ogre in to fight the other guy's mummy, uh, and it would have been it would have been a decent play from Unger eight times out of nine. But I still think I would have just left him. I would have left the ogre there on three guys, or, or two versus three over there, and I would have got more guys over there. But again, that's just that's just my opinion. Doesn't hold any weight, does it? Um, you know, on another day, Ungern could have stopped the score there. So yeah, both sides played well. Silse was patient, and uh, when he when he broke, when he had the chance, when all the guys were on the wrong side, and then the one in eighty one. So you know, definitely Ungern's had the worst dice. One in nine with it trying to free the ogre, and then one in eighty one early in the turn. Maybe he could have done some safe moves first though. Strange setup from Silsa, you don't see this kind of setup very often, do you? Um, he is giving up a mighty blow hit on the white. But I guess he had to expose somebody. A blots. Mine got. This is actually a very nice setup from uh, Ungern. It made him very resilient to a blitz, didn't it? If he blitzes this guy down, there's still a screen here. If he blitzes this guy down, there's a screen there. So I, I definitely like the, uh, like the anti blitz setup from Ungern there, absolutely. Means that he doesn't get crippled by the blitz here, so so props to props to Ungern for the setup there. Yeah, I think I'd have just done rule of five. If you do rule of five then the mummies are on the outside. Zombies there and your your ghouls are, your whites are protected and so are your ghouls. Whereas he exposed a, a white that maybe needn't have to have been. And also, he's benching a ghoul on defense, which is fair enough. Only, only you know, it means he's got one for overtime if he gets there, or a two or three turn score if he gets the chance. And uh, yeah, it, it means he doesn't have to expose too many ghouls on defense. Flexibility of not being able to field them is quite good, isn't it? Cover the ball, making blocks with block first. I don't know how crucial this block is to be made. I guess go for the pickup beforehand. Double skull. I think maybe what he could have done here is move this lineman to there. And then he could have accepted that double skull. Because with only three re-rolls for Ungern, and, you know, over time, a distinct possibility. In fact, probably his only chance. <laughs> you know, he's already lost on defence. So, you know, the best he can hope for, he can't score early and try to turn him over again. You know, that's not going to work in the World Cup, really. Um, scoring early and hunting for a turnover is, is not gonna is not gonna work. Um, it works against bad players, or or players that you're much better than, or whatever. Or if you've got wood elves, or maybe if you know if you get lucky. 
but with humans he's not going to be able to score early and, and score again so really Ungern is playing for overtime here he's trying to get it to overtime best he can do is score on turn 8 overtime so yeah maybe the lineman should have stood there and maybe he could have eaten them double skulls then so yeah it's also just going for the the elf screen pretty much Which is fair enough, you, you know, try and play a really hard defence. If he stops him scoring, he's won. Um, that's what he's thinking, isn't it? If he's just going to do everything he can to stop Ungern scoring. So he's going to go for the hit on the mummy again. Try and roll some good dice and Kaz mummy. If you Kaz mummy, I mean, you know, that's what he that's what he did against uh, Wolfpark, wasn't it? Kaz the mummy, and then it becomes plain sailing, really. With only one mummy, um, undead just looked like a really bad human team. So he's trying to get lucky with the, uh, the mighty blow hits. I'm not getting forward, and again, that the the blizzard makes offense harder. I think, you know, because you. Although you can leave them with, like, say, a double GFI to hit the ball that normally you couldn't leave them with, I think to get forward to score is, you know... Wow, he made the 3 plus GFI to blitz with the mummy. That is a that is a wild move. That is a wild move. I guess that's why uh, that's why Ungern wanted to knock the mummy down as well. That's another reason to knock the mummy down. It's because the GFI and the blitz. Wow, that is ballsy 3 plus, three plus GFI there. I don't hate this because you know, if he doesn't base the uh, mummy, the mummy can do what it likes. So by basing him, if he bases him with anyone else, they get smashed by mighty blow. If he bases with the ogre, you can only one dice him, but it's still a bit risky. I'm not sure I would have done it. But you know, he's got it. He's going to play with some risk now, I think. And he's got to try. He's really got to try and get moving. I know he's got the handoff chance to a catcher or something. And you know that is one of the great things about humans. So yeah, he protects the protects the ogre because the the guard is the other side of the pitch. I think I'd want the guard more central, but then he, I guess he wants to tackle central as well. Doesn't want to get broken either side with the catchers. No, it goes away. I, I might have gone in, gone in there. I might have got. I might have based a bit there. I think that was maybe a maybe a decent opportunity to to base a bit there, but um, he didn't. He's, you know, he's got the two rerolls, so he could certainly absorb some losses before overtime. Yeah, that's the thing. He goes for the one die, so he could have just lost his lost his ogre then, couldn't he? Goes back, goes back in. And he, because he made the first, he didn't go for the second dodge, so. The, he gets the blitz off, mighty blow tackle, instantly killing the ghoul. As anybody on the internet would tell you, every time a ghoul or a skink gets blitzed, they die, with no exceptions. So I'm surprised about the follow-up there. Um, well, not follow-up, I mean, he didn't follow-up, then he moved in. That's a that's an incredibly risky move. With And he hasn't helped himself by putting the guy next, because that is an easy chain to surf his tackle, mighty blow. So I don't know what he was thinking of. I think he probably should have just gone back one square um, there. I think that was a definite mistake by Ungern. Uh, no doubt mistake there. But he surfs a, surfs a zombie and randomly casts another zombie. So he is two men up on the drive now. Which has got to be nice. 
bit concerned about where he's where he's keeping his ball. And there you go, first move is getting the assist in. And then the blitz. Yeah, that was that was really bizarre moving this guy in. Because he even didn't follow, and then once he didn't break AV, I mean if he broke AV maybe for if he didn't break AV, maybe go in and stop him moving away next turn, but that was the easiest the easiest surf of Silsay's life there, wasn't it? Um and you know what a play at the surf as well, a mighty blow tackle. Amazing. Uh, I really don't know what he was thinking of with that move, but you know, that, again, that's it, isn't it? That's Blood Bowl. You know, he probably had something in his head, and it didn't, it just didn't pan out. So yeah, he's got the now the tackle is committed to this side. Um. So there's the chance to kind of potato over here, isn't there? I wonder if that's what we'll see. Ooh, bonehead. Boneheads are, God, big guys are just horrible, aren't they? <laughs> they really are horrible. They've done they've done so bad over, over all these games. So blitzing the tackler, that makes you think that he's going to try and do something, doesn't it? Facing the mummy for the handoff, yeah. And off he goes. It's a risky move, especially on turn 13. But really, and, and he's actually up players as well. And he, he's just he's just chosen to do this now. Maybe that was, oh, he's not up two players, is he? Because after the surf, he's only up one player. But maybe that was a bit, a bit too much. Um, he did. He did take the chance though to get up past the tackler, which is fair enough. But yeah, maybe he didn't have to. Eh? Maybe that's a little bit too early. That's why I didn't hit the thrower there, just in case of overtime. Oh, it's because he gets the assist here. Fair enough. For a dodge and fails it, gets KO'd. So now it's ten versus eight. Um, I think Ungern could absolutely just run back <laughs> and make a cage around here, uh, stand him up, block him, you know, bring people around here and just kind of cage up in the middle. That might be an idea. Hmm. Decides against it. So this is a this is a bit risky, isn't it? I mean, you've got to say either either badly played by Ungern or well played by Silse there to uh, score with to give Silse a three turn chance. Um, that's that's significant. I know I know the uh, the Blizzard makes it harder, but he had a man advantage on that drive and, and scored early. So yeah, interesting. Maybe he's tempting use of rerolls before overtime, but I think he more just kind of trapped himself by going for the break. Um, but you know, at least scoring is better than not scoring, isn't it? <laughs> scoring early, and and they they might not score. If you if you know if he if he uh, hadn't scored at all, if he had if he had you know done something else and just not scored at all, he would have been out already, wouldn't he? So at least now he's got the points on the board. And he's trusting in his defensive skills to get to overtime. Uh, he's gone for the offset, the <laughs> offset LOS memes. <laughs> oh, brilliant. The fun with offset LOSs. Which I don't think is a great idea when you're trying to stop a three turn touchdown. I would definitely want to keep the middle strongest and then if they push down a side, shut them down. But. You know, um, Silsa doesn't have to go crazy here, he does have three turns. So he just needs to get, you know, afford a little bit this turn. So he does try to go a little bit, a little bit crazy going down the sideline. Um, you know, it's not, it's not crazy, crazy. <laughs> 
but it's uh, you know a little bit aggressive, which is fair enough. Facing the tackler to keep his ghoul safe. Use the reroll on the pickup. Which is fair enough, because obviously you'd rather win in normal time, um, if you can, than, than bank on overtime, but a bit dodgy. You don't want to be without rerolls in overtime, do you? So this is this is a hard one to judge this offense. How many rerolls? I mean Ungern has to use rerolls to stop the score. Because if he if he does, you know, if he, if if Silsay scores and guns out. So Ungern has to use his rerolls on this drive. Um, however, Silse, you know, probably doesn't want to use them for overtime. But then on the other hand, if he could have scored with using the reroll, that's that's better than losing the toss in overtime and having three rerolls, isn't it? So very interesting. You could almost just not activate the, the ogre here. Like, I know that'd be crazy. It's a crazy idea not activating it. But he, oh no, he's gonna blitz there. Okay, this is good. It's a crit, but he would be holding the spot and he wouldn't be boneheaded. Um, he does the, now this is interesting. He does the, the normal thing of just standing here um, to make a line. But if you think about it, if this blitzer had come around here and then he blocked, um, that makes him incre even just on a push. There's two guys here and the guard there, and they can push one, but they can only push him to here. And then if they power him, you know, and it's just everything's harder to come around. So where it's just standing here, it's it's really not good enough. I think I think this was a, you know, and this is nitpicking and you know the benefit of not being invested in the game at all emotionally. But I really think this and this is a natural thing to do, just standing there. But you know. I think that was a really was a mistake to be honest. Um, I think he should have absolutely been in here. See, if, if, even with a pal there with no follow up, I think he probably should have followed up. Mm, that's arguable, arguable of follow up. But now the guard can just go in here, tackle can blitz there, and now he makes this dodge to uh, to shore that up. But guard could have come in there, blitz there with tackle, and yeah. But he obviously can't do that. He can't do that now. But I would still. I what I would do here if I was still say one dice blitz, one two three four five six, seven over up to there, and then this guy double GFIs or something to make like a sideline cage. Um, yeah, but you know, had he not made that dodge, the guard would have come in making that a two dice block and tying up more players. Whereas I think this guy coming around here would have completely shut that play down. Now, what Silse does is a blitz over here, and his idea is to uh, make four GFIs to score, which, if there were two pluses, um, I could see being better. But... He rolls them ones anyway, so the, the blizzard didn't actually affect it. But yeah, that was his idea. Now, it's a bit wild, isn't it? That was a bit wild, because that was... Asking for four three pluses, I think it's a lot. Um, and he had to make the second one, because if he just hadn't made that one... This guy could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven GFI. So he could have got in scoring range with just one GFI. So maybe he could have done that first. And then gone... But it's a three plus, so, you know, it's it's not easy... And, uh, you know, then he would have just been blitzed by the mighty blow tackler anyway. So, yeah, I can see what he was trying to do. And he had to make the second one, you know. So he had to decide on the first one whether he's going to make the second one and whether to re-roll it. I think maybe he's not re-rolling and just failing would have been all right. But um, I can certainly see why he went for it. So he gets a mighty blow blitz in. On turn 16, and we're we're headed for overtime for sure now. A 
foul? Wow, that's ballsy. <laughs> Is it? No, it's not. No. Yeah, because he's got he's got a KO. So if that KO doesn't come back, he could have been down men. And Silse has like a mighty blow blitz. Could have had it. I think I would have mighty blow blitzed the uh, the yoga there, but never mind. And he makes a cage over here anyway. <laughs> because why not? Oh, he's going to foul, that's why. That's why he's doing it. Because he really should foul, because he's got no players out. So this is an absolute essential foul from... Uh... Oh, he does have a player out. Oh, wow. So no, so they both made a little bit dodgy players there, because if the KOs don't come back, they'd be, they're down to 10 players. And they get sent off. If they got sent off, and the player would stayed out. So there you go, the human's player stays out. And the ghoul stays out, so if either of them had been caught there, they would have been down to 10 players. Oh no, not the undead, because he had the raise the dead, didn't he? Oh no, the undead was on 12 normally, so yeah. So that was absolutely, that was both a bit, bit risky fouls there. Because neither of them got their KOs back, so they both would have been punished on their send-off. So it goes to overtime, and Silse wins the coin toss. So, he's probably going to win. <laughs> And you know that's it's not it's not disrespecting anybody, is it? At this at this level, everyone's good, and probably the luckier person's going to win. Um, obviously, the, the the dice off for the who who wins the toss is is absolutely critical. Um, you know, both both coaches have played well, and it's just you know pretty much. Whoever gets the slightly better dice is going to win. I do think maybe Zungern made a mistake getting his tackler surfed. And maybe there is tricky play. To, it was a nice play to free up the ogre, but it wasn't It wasn't too likely to work. And it did cost him to set it up. So I would say maybe Silse has played better so far. But he's also certainly been lucky, hasn't he, with the... Uh, the armor breaks and everything. So he set up very weak here. Very incredibly weak setup at this side. If this had been a blitz, it would have been game over, pretty much. That was really, really shocking. You know, I think he definitely should have taken one of these ghouls and started the ghoul over here. Uh, probably both ghouls should have been here. <laughs> ghoul there and a ghoul there. Um, they're not really doing a whole lot in the middle. Uh, that was... He would have been... Absolutely exposed by the uh, by the blitz. Then, in contrast to Ungun, who who set up great against the blitz. So there you go. That's uh, you know I'm not I'm not hating on Ungun at all. I, there, there was certainly there was certainly reward to his uh, Ogre blitz play, but I think I think getting his guy surf was a mistake. Uh, random Kaz there can't apple. He still has an apple Ungun. And funnily enough, if he had appled the first Kaz, that was a death, if it had, if on a 2+, plus, um, Silse wouldn't have had the reserve, the extra zombie, so he'd actually be on 10 men at the moment. So that's, I mean, that's it's always tempting to re-roll the, uh, re-roll the death, I think, against, uh, against... Undead. Where was he there? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he couldn't blitz with him. So now I think that this is this is tough because the important thing here is now again this is why I think Silse should have put more ghouls over here because all he could do was pick it up. Um I think where where Ungern needs to get his team is is, you know, here. He's gotta get men in here. He wants to have a bit in front. Because he doesn't want to get scored on, obviously. So he's got to have a bit in front. But he's got to, it, the important part is here, isn't it? Because he doesn't want um, Silse to be able to like get his team back together. So he's got to he's got to put like a 
a lot in here to make sure it can't get back. So yeah, he's got two players left. I think maybe you could have put the catcher there and the blitzer there. I think that would have been better. Now, okay, he would have been he would have been left exposed to a white thing, but I think he could have definitely had an extra player here, um, or even here maybe. No, probably not. There. But as it is, this is uh, this is pretty easy to just blitz blitz the catcher. Maybe he's blitzing the catcher first might have been an idea. But on the other hand, if this if this block wasn't a knockdown, he would have wanted to blitz him. So I don't think it was wrong to do that, to do the block first. But now he can kind of now that he was the only one in the way, wasn't he? This this catcher. Maybe he could have uh, had things better. You know, it's. I think I think he made a bit of a mistake. Um. Moving the ghoul first there, this mummy could have come to here. And also with these two, he could have had like the zombie kind of where he is. And the white could have run around to here. Uh, but you know, it's just it's just nitpicking, isn't it? It's He still did the good job of getting his team back together, getting caged up. Uh, big bonehead. <laughs> Stops him getting the ogre back in. So now, you know... Ungern's happy, I guess, that he's got this guy back now. And he's it's just looking a bit ragtag now, his defence, isn't it? He's lost he's lost a player. So he's, he's down ten versus eleven. But he's gonna try and keep it keep it hard for Silse to get forward. You know, at the end of the day, although, although ghouls are fast, he does only have three of them. So, because one's KO'd. I'm sh I'm sure he would rather have four on the pitch right now. But he's only got three, and he's only got the two wide, so he hasn't got that mobile a team. You know, two movement three players, a bunch of movement four, no agility players. So he really can't, like, you know, if this was Wood Elves, he'd blitz this guy and you'd have a cage over here, <laughs> and the game would be won. This guy could have gone seven up there and stuff, you know, so... But he just doesn't have that many fast players, so he's got to do the kind of safe move around here a little bit. So yeah, I, I think this is fine, you know, that's, and this is the thing, isn't it, if people play a lot of, say, Wood Elves, or they're used to Wood Elves and they were playing Undead here, they maybe would have tried for that play that you would do with with Wood Elves and then end up in a world of hurt. I don't know how much Silsay plays Undead, maybe he just plays, you know, Dwarves or another random bash team, uh, but that was definitely the right thing to do, to do like the kind of boring play of just... Hardly moving forward. Though it does give um, Ungern the chance to get back a little bit. I like this, just getting the assists in. The two nice. Without block though, so maybe he could have done something else first. Two rerolls each. Wants to activate the ogre here, doesn't he? Has he blitzed yet? Oh, he's gonna blitz. He's gonna blitz this ghoul, isn't he? Of course. Does not get the seventy-five percent knockdown. I think I maybe should have left him in contact with the ghoul, right? but he wants. To, he wants to show this up, which is fair enough. Goes for crazy dodges here. I think maybe just tagging the tackler might have been an idea. And now it's easy to say that after <laughs> after he uh, after he uses a reroll 
and then rolls a double two, fails the dodge and casts himself. Now had he made the dodge, and he's got the banks of two here, that looks a really good play. But failing it looks terrible, but I still think it wasn't doing a whole lot standing here. Um, if he blitzes this guy, does he get to move that far forward? I don't know. Um, but that's the thing, isn't it? You know, it's like maybe maybe it was crucial. Maybe maybe his defense would have been a lot stronger with that guy there. But now he's not. <laughs> so that's two men down, isn't he? This drive, uh, ungun now. Staying put, keeping it safe. That's the thing. I think Ungern doesn't have to. He might feel like he has to turn over, Silse, but he absolutely doesn't have to turn him over. He just has to survive, doesn't he? But now that Silse has got the reroll advantage, I'm sure Ungern will be feeling the pressure to turn him over more. So just going to punch there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Could move him and base up this uh, this ghoul here. But he keeps he keeps it very strong in front there. Which is fair enough. And then he goes for a dodge here. Which I don't know, I think a one dice would have been better. Because you know, you might you might end up well first of all it's a two plus. <laughs> the, the the one dice block is a two plus. Um, and now there's suddenly a big gap here, isn't there? And there's a chance to just w straight up win it here for Silse if he uh, if he potatoes with a with a ghoul there. So yeah, maybe, maybe that should have been a one dice block. But then you know who knows where he's going to move with him. So Looks like he is going for it. I mean, he could just move around. I think probably moving around would be the the safer option. But you know, he doesn't actually have to score, does he? Um, but at the moment, this is just a four plus dodge from the ogre to hit him, so he's just gonna have to do the pass. Wow, that was a four plus pass. That was a four plus pass, three plus catch, and he runs off. And he GFIs as well in the snow. Wow, unbelievable. So he stands up, one, two, three, four, it would be a GFI. One, two, three, four, five, six, double GFI. So the only play open to uh, Ungern here is the dodge for a one dice with block and tackle. Everyone else is too far away. So yeah, maybe, maybe, and this is being really harsh, maybe Ungern over defended up here. But again, that's being really harsh, you know, I don't, you know he's down two players as well. So he just can't cover the uh, the width of the pitch as well as he could do. Only gets the push. So, and out of re-rolls. So now if Silse could, um, could almost just stall out the overtime now with a two re-roll advantage, it gives him a massive chance to win. Makes all the rolls except the last one. <gasps> that would have been a great, a great GFI to make. Um, but actually, it wasn't even the snow either. It was just a one, I think. Straight up one on the GFI. But that, that would have been a really good place to stand. So there's, there's two ways of doing this. Um, if he'd GFI'd here, then he could have two dice to score. Um... And that the idea is the failure state would have been better failing the GFI. However, if he had failed the GFI, he gets the ball carrier served, and it's horrific. So I think the the, the moderately better failure state isn't worth the additional roll that the GFI would have then required the blitz as well. So I think just going for the straight up three plus blitz is the best play. Maybe he could have brought one back in case of uh, you know a, a ball coming in this way or something, as a bit of a safety. And he gets the power on the one dice blitz. So 
So there you go. Silse Silse joins Orna in the semi-finals. He'll be playing the winner of RTSD versus Guinness. And uh, yeah, I think he I think they both played very well, you know, like I know I, I know I nitpick a little bit. It's it's really not a criticism of the them their coaching ability or anything. It's just offering alternative lines they could have taken and stuff. Um I think maybe there was a bit of a mistake by Ungern, you know, getting his mighty blow tackler surfed. Uh, that was definitely bad. But other than that, it was mostly the guy who rolled better. Won, you know, 15 AV breaks to 9. About the same amount of blocks. And, uh, yeah, Ungern. 38, 34, 37. So, fine, fine block dice, really. 69% dodges. And... Uh, Silse, 57% dodges, and 28, 35, 45. So really great block dice there, 28 to 45. So he's had a better ratio of block dice, more AV breaks. Won the coin toss in overtime. Had Ungern won the coin toss in overtime, probably would have won. And, you know, so that's it, you know. At the end of the day, everyone's good, obviously, in the semi in the quarterfinals. Everybody's good. So, you know, it's going to be these kind of things that's going to decide the games. Um, but, yeah, that, I, I would say that maybe Zungern did make the only mistake of the match. Um, although, you know, Silse did some did some ballsy moves with his ghouls. Uh, so there you go. Commiserations to Zungern. Congrats to Silse. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.